The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. Not long after the redevelopment of Vickers Town, the newly formed Sudrian Council was sworn in and set to work. One of the first projects it put forward was the construction of an airport at Ellsbridge. This proposal was not without objections. Local residents were worried about noise pollution, dry or airfield on the Farquhar branch was terrified of a loss of business, and we weren't too happy at the idea of extra competition. It took many months of compromises and redrafting before the proposal was finally accepted. And after three years of construction, the airport was opened. And truth be told, not much changed. If anything, its addition only benefited the island. People were now able to reach Sodor faster and from further afield than the mainland. And I'll admit, whenever we passed by, we would glance over and marvel at whatever type of aircraft was on the runway. You see, throughout the 50s, air travel was really taking off. Pun partially intended. Flights were becoming more affordable to the general public, so the companies behind them were constantly innovating and bringing out new designs. Planes weren't the only type of vehicle to arrive at Ellsbridge, and Percy would be the first to meet its newest addition. Hello there, I'm Harold. Who are you? I'm Percy. Don't recall seeing you before. I only arrived today. Welcome to Sodor then. What have they got you doing? Whatever needs doing. Charter flights, search and rescue, commuter and cargo services. I can do it all and much better than anything found on land. Better? Cool. You're rather puffed up in those whirly arms of yours. Don't disparage the arms. They're very nice. I can hover like a bird. Don't you wish you could hover? No, I like my rails, thank you very much. Can't see why. I think railways are slow. They're not much use and quite out of date. Hey, we're not past it and we never will be. We're just as important as you, if you say so. But I like being able to soar high above the clouds. Up there is where true freedom lies. I almost feel sorry for vehicles that can't, especially chaps like you. And why is that? Because you're slaves to your rails. Cars, buses and lorries can move about with relative ease. Even ships have the vast expanse of the world's oceans to traverse. But you engines can literally only go where the tracks take you. Doesn't that bother you? I am, uh, uh, sorry, got a dash. Had to see a coach about a train. All right, but think about what I've said. And remember, wings work wonders, you know, always. Something on your mind, Percy? Yes, Clive. That stuck-up whirlybird Harold thinks railways are slow, out of date, and not very useful. Sounds like a right royal prat. But come on, Percy. We've been taking that sort of rubbish from the roads for years. I can handle that because they're literally at my level. Harold seems to think he's above that just because he can fly. Up there is where true freedom lies, he said. He then had the gall to say we're slaves to our rails. He's right. What? He's right, Percy. We are. Think about it. Blimey, it's true. I can't believe I never realized this before. Most engines don't. It's usually an outside force that makes us confront it. Did that happen to you? Yep, back when we were extending the main line to Tidmouth, one of the workmen asked, is it frustrating not being able to go wherever you want? It took me days to come up with an answer. What was it? No, it doesn't. These rails make me unique. They allow me to do what other vehicles can't, like move fast and carry heavier loads. But they do limit our versatility. Every method of transport has strengths and weaknesses. That's why so many exist, to complement the other. We're all links in a chain that keeps the world running. You're right. Still, I'd love to show that bird brain helicopter. Just promise you won't do anything stupid. Now, on to more pleasant matters. Who's your pick for the regatta? I'm going with Little Dixie. You? Thunderstruck. A name like that tells me she's got power to match. We still going for the same wager as last time? Yep. So be prepared for your Thunderstruck face when I win. No worries. I'll be off with you, you young whippersnapper.
Percy. Hello, Harold. You need something? No, just give me a client to ride along your branch. A quaint little line, I must say. I'll be returning to the airport soon. See you down there. I reckon I could get there first. Don't even think about it. You couldn't beam even if you were running light. Thanks for the words of encouragement. I'm sorry, Percy, but it's true. That's what I hate about it. out of date now. Pardon? I got down here before you did, and I thought you might. What? I said see you down there. I didn't mean right away. I hope you didn't think we were racing. Moreover, I hope you didn't speed. As a registered search and rescue aircraft, I would be obligated to report this to the police. I didn't, I swear. Good. The regatta should be the only force racing around here. Ah, my clients are back. Sorry, Percy. Now it's my turn to dash. Be sure to stick to the speed limit while I'm gone. I hate chasing after runaway trains. Ta-ta! Well done, Percy. You really showed him. Shut up! He didn't actually speed, did he? He said no, and I believe him. But he was rod up good and proper, let me tell you. I was glad to get out of the shed. I'm sure James was equally pleased when I left tonight. Why's that? First off, what's this regatta that everyone keeps talking about? It's this big yacht race they hold every year. The competitors set up from Napford and sail right around the island. We take bets on the winners. With what? Bragging rights. Whoever wins gets to boast about anything they want for an entire week and everyone else has to listen. It's great fun, especially since I've won three years in a row. Now I really feel bad. What happened? The lads were talking about their picks and Jim's quipped mine should be old timer. I went off on him. He snapped back at me and it turned into a full-fledged argument. I take it you don't like others making jokes about your age. No, it's my biggest flaw. Then you need to hear this. During my trials, Toby was the one who showed me the ropes. I thought he was an old fusspot and made several cracks about his age. One day, he stared me dead in the eye and in a low voice said, At least I got this far. That was enough to shut me up. Really? Maybe I'll try that out. And I'll make sure to apologize to James next time I see him. It might take a while for him to accept. He's the kind of bloke that holds grudges. Anyway, how's it going with the post train? Is this your first time taking it? On Sodor, yes. But I used to take them all the time back in the Great Northern Railway. Me and Percy were the same back in the days of the Big Four. Because we used to sleep during the day and work at night, the others would call us the Vampire Twins. Then I'll make sure to bring a clove of garlic next time I see you. Good night, Thomas. Night, Emily. Good evening, Emily. Evening, Sir Topham. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Or that, whatever it is. It has a name, you oversized kettle. Oh, real original, mate. That will do, Emily. This is Theodore. He's a prototype class 40 and will be joining us if he passes his trials. Due respect, sir. You mean when I pass my trials? I like your confidence, but not your attitude. Make sure you work on that if you expect to last in my region. Now, Emily, why are you so late coming in? I'm sorry, sir. I had trouble maintaining steam installed on Gordon's Hill. Ah, oh, did the kettle spring a leak? Another remark like that, Theodore, and your air intake will become very well acquainted with my hat. Understood? Ye yes, sir. Continue. That's really it, sir. I was stranded and had to wait for a banker. I tried making up for lost time, but it was difficult as I continued having problems along the way. You said the shortened distance of Sodor's main line nullified your steaming problems. I'm hoping you didn't lie to me. I didn't, sir. I swear. And the workmen found no real issues when they inspected me after I joined. Perhaps they didn't look closely enough. I'll be speaking with them tomorrow. <sighs> 
I hardly think passing the buck is going to impress them. Them, sir? Those men over there. They represent BR and Royal Mail. They're here as part of a nationwide evaluation of the post trains. Any region found to be underperforming will be subject to rigorous streamlining, meaning they'll cut it entirely or severely reduce the service in some way. Your late arrival will not make a good impression on them. I'm sorry, sir. However, I'm hoping your attempt to make up for lost time will impress them in some way. We'll have to wait and see. Don't feel too bad, love. It can't be easy running such an important train at your age. At least I got this far. Uh, yes. Yes, you did. Sir Topham was able to convince the delegation to keep the post train for the Northwestern region, which was a relief to us as the service holds great sentimental value. One of the oldest in the island's history, we've always taken great pride in helping deliver letters and parcels to and from Sodor. Though we held on to it, it was still streamlined. The branch line trains were cut entirely, and all mail was delivered to and picked up from stations along the main line. Also, Theodore was placed on this run. As much as I would like to say he was poorly suited for the job, he wasn't. He was efficient and punctual, but his superiority complex rubbed all of us the wrong way. Thankfully, his overbearing smugness came to an end when he broke down at Ellsbridge after his cooling system failed. Percy had been in the yard at the time and was able to take the train on to Napford. This was no easy task as the trucks were surprisingly heavy. Nonetheless, he made it to the station, where Henry took them the rest of the way. By the time the run was completed, it was very late, or early as the case may be. And believe it or not, the higher-ups were very upset by this. Can you repeat that? Head office and the postmaster have complained to the Fat Controller about the delays last night. But that wasn't my fault. I know, and so is the Fat Controller. But those prats wouldn't listen. Where does that leave the post train? In limbo. I take it then you two haven't heard the news flying about. Over what? The post trains, of course. They're going to scrap them and use me instead. Rubbish. You couldn't carry even a fraction of the mail our vans can hold. Well, if not me, airmail in general. No surprise, really. The object of the service is to deliver post fast, and considering how slow you chaps move with it, you should give everyone their stamps back. Post haste. I really hate you. <sighs> oh, thank goodness you're both still here. All right there, mate. You two are need on the main line. Has that spam can broken down again? No, the turntable at Napford has. None of the main line engines can leave the shed, so you'll have to deliver the mail tonight. Engines from the other branches are being called in to help. The Fat Controller said this will be a make or break moment for the post trains. Looks like we'll have to work extra hard tonight. Just like old times. You wait, Harold. We're not licked yet. I'll believe that when I see it. All the same, good luck. But remember, wings work wonders, you know. Always. Hello, Harold. No flying today. The wind's too strong. I've been grounded. You need rails. They work wonders, you know. Always. Evidently, yes. I believe I owe you an apology. For many reasons, but one in particular. For dismissing your proficiency with the post train. I heard how well you and the others handled it last night. The word is your performance has inspired Royal Mail to keep the service running. How do you know? The postmaster had a word with the air traffic controller. The trial mail flight I was to perform tonight has been suspended indefinitely. That's not the same as cancelled. In flying circles, it is. So, will you accept my apology for being so rude? Well, I never like holding grudges, so I suppose- Oh, nice! No, no, radio. Oh, no. There's an emergency with the regatta. Several yachts have capsized. There are people in the water. I have to fly out and save them. But what about these winds? What about the rain? I'll have to risk it. Lives depend on it. Good luck, then. Thank you, Percy. I'll need it.
Oh, I don't mind saying that was nerve-wracking. Was anyone hurt? Nothing more serious than a twisted ankle. Everyone else was sopping wet. The worst they'll likely suffer is a cold. The regatta was lucky you came to the island. This was the first year I can remember it's ever been hit by a storm. No one else would have been able to help as quickly as you. Those arms of yours saved the day. Well, it's like I've been saying. Wings work wonders, you know. Oh, you don't have wings. Oh, no. No, I really don't. I can't believe I never realized this before. Ha 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 ha. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, Percy, for your kind words and accepting my apology. Technically, I didn't. I never finished my sentence. Would you like to finish it now? That depends. Are you willing to listen to me boast for the next week? Wait, what? You didn't. No, no, that's not fair. Little Dixie crossed the line long before the storm hit. Gordon told me this morning. Okay, okay. You won. Well done. Yes, it was well done, wasn't it? Aren't I the clever one? Percy rightly enjoyed his winnings for the next week, despite a few challenges from others. Of course, he did accept Harold's apology, and the pair went on to become firm friends. Indeed, the helicopter became a friend to everyone and was a constant sight in the skies of Sodor. An invaluable asset, his involvement during an emergency was often the difference between life and death. Speaking of invaluable assets, the post train remained. The mainline component, that is. The branch line services were never reactivated, but that was a small price to pay in light of the added efficiency. As for Theodore, he was repaired and then reassigned. He said goodbye to no one, but did leave behind two things, a rather nasty smell, and strangely enough, a battered top hat. <laughs>